Please welcome the dynamic duo Olivia Nelson and Ashley Lords. Today they'll be showcase premiering content in their session, Workflows. They work when they flow. Please stick around after Olivia and Ashley's session for a live Q&A. Welcome to our DynamicCon virtual presentation. Um, thank you for coming today and thank you DynamicCon for having us. Today we will be covering the product Business Central and our presentation today is on workflows. They work when they flow. Um, this will be presented by myself, Ashley Lord and Olivia Nelson. We both work with Stone Ridge Software. Um, so let's hop right into our agenda and cover some of the content that we'll be going through today. First, we'll start with our introduction. Please feel free to introduce yourself as well. We would love to know what brings you to DynamicsCon today, what you want to learn about workflows. We will have a live Q&A at the end of this session. So please drop your questions in there and we'll address them at the end. Next, we'll go into the approval methods um, and approval user setup window. We'll give you some real world examples on when you would use approvals and we'll go through the setup uh, that happens in the back end there. Then we'll go into a demo on how to configure a purchase order approval. Uh, we'll demonstrate that approval and we'll send the request and approve it. Next, we'll have a general journal batch approval. We'll go through that process. And finally, um, we'll show you how to configure a workflow user group so that only one person in the group needs to send the approval. All right, without further ado, um, I'll introduce myself. I am Ashley Lords. Um, I am a certified Business Central Functional Consultant here at Stone Ridge Software. I have about two years experience working with the Dynamics products. And prior to going into consulting, I actually was in IT, so I have a system administration background. I've got some additional skills in JET reports. I do JET trainings here at Stone Ridge, work with Power BI. Um, I work on multi-workload uh, projects, so I integrate with the Dataverse. And then I've got that system administration and Azure Active Directory and PowerShell scripts as well. Um, I'm going to pass this over to my friend, team manager, and colleague, Olivia Nelson. Thank you, Ashley. Yes, I'm Olivia Nelson, and I'm a Business Central Consulting Team Manager here at Stone Ridge Software. Um, prior to this role, I spent some time doing Business Central implementations myself, and prior to that, I was in an IT department as an ERP analyst and administrator at a manufacturer working with Microsoft Dynamics NAV. So I've been in the NAV Business Central space for close to 10 years now. Um, and prior to being in the NAV and Business Central world, I, in a formal life, was a controller, project accountant, and worked primarily in accounting, but was also the system administrator for Business Central's distant cousin, Dynamics AX 2009, and that was at a manufacturer as well. All right, approval workflows in Business Central. So I want to talk a little bit about a, the what, why, and the how, and who, and the when. So what is an approval workflow? So that is a sequence of tasks triggered by an action conditioner rule and Business Central is ready for you to set this up and use this. And why workflows can be implemented along with your business processes to help enforce rules or approvals so that you can uh, work within your guidelines with separation of duties and just really enforce best practices. And how Business Central provides workflow templates that can be used to set up your own personalized workflows with the proper business scenarios. And so who and when Business Central workflows can be leveraged to address many scenarios in Business Central. I've outlined some of them here. So for instance, a manager may want to use a workflow to approve changes made to master records. So there, you might want to have restrictions or approvals around changes made to customers or vendors and even really time sensitive data such as customer credit limits, uh, vendor bank, account info, and then also just new users and changes to permissions. And a purchasing manager or purchaser may want to approve a PO going out to a vendor. A sales manager or even a salesperson may want to ensure that a sales order is correct and approved before being released for shipping and or production. And another common scenario is that a controller or finance manager may want to approve financial transactions before they are posted. All right, and then I'm gonna dive right into the different approval methods that can be configured in Business Central. So first, we have the direct approver method, meaning that the request will be routed based on the user who makes the request. So whoever um, 
is specified as that person's direct approver will receive the approval request. Then we have specific approver. This is actually configured within the workflow so that every request, regardless of who sends it, goes to that specific person. Um, so they will always receive the request from that workflow. And then we have the salesperson and purchaser method. Salesperson and purchaser code lives on either a master record or a transaction within Business Central. And we use that code um, to route the request to the correct salesperson or purchaser who needs to approve. Um, I will show you how you set up that relationship between the user and the salesperson um, and how you, how you would configure that. Next, we have the first qualified approver. So this is going to look at specific amounts related to sales, purchases, and requests, and it's going to route the approval based on who is actually qualified to approve that request, meaning that if you aren't qualified to approve more than a $10,000 purchase, you would never receive a request for $11,000 to approve that because you aren't qualified. Whereas the approver chain is a combination of of who is qualified and what is who is your direct approver. So it's going to go to your direct approver and if they aren't qualified to approve that request, it's gonna be routed to their direct approver and it's gonna continue this chain until someone who is qualified to approve the request does. And then lastly, we have the workflow user group method. So this allows you to select a group of users and send the approval request to all of those users it can either be sequentially or simultaneously. And today we'll explore that one a little bit to show you how you can set that up so that only one of those people um, needs to approve it in the group. So now we're gonna dive into the approval user setup window um, and, and those methods and how this relates to that. So I mentioned the salesperson and purchaser code. This is where you define that one-to-one -one relationship with the code and the user ID that is for the person um, sending the approval request. Uh, the direct approver is defined here in the approver ID field on this window. Um, so in this example, um, my approver is Olivia. Okay. And then we have the first qualified approver and approver chain methods. Those are going to look at all of the amounts in these fields and then um, route the request based on that. And the approver chain actually is going to look at that direct approver uh, field as well um, to, to create the chain. One thing I'll note too, there was the other approver methods that I mentioned. In order to use those methods and do the configuration, you do need to set up that user in this approval user setup. So all approvers must be set up in the approval user setup window. All right, so next we will dive in on how to do a purchase order approval configuration. Um, for this scenario, we're gonna use the direct approver method and we will configure the approval on the purchase order, okay? These are the steps that we're gonna go through in our demo today. First, we will create a new workflow um, from the purchase order approval workflow template. So I always recommend starting with the out of the box templates that Business Central provides. It's gonna be much easier to tweak those than it is to create all of that logic um, yourself. So always start with a template and tweak it like we're gonna to do today to fit your needs. The next thing we'll do is we'll adjust the on condition um, so that this purchase order only is triggered for purchase orders over $10,000. So anything less than $10,000 wouldn't require an approval. Then we'll set up the direct approver method within the workflow. And we're gonna add a notification in our workflow so that the sender uh, receives an email when the request has been approved. The final step for our session today is that we're gonna enable the workflow so that's active in the system. So the workflow doesn't, um, isn't enforced until it is enabled. And without further ado, let's hop right into our demo. So um, as I mentioned, we are gonna start with a workflow template. So we'll search for workflow templates. And you can see the different templates that come here out of the box with Business Central. They are categorized uh, based on the area that they relate to. We've got administration, finance, integration, purchase payables, purchase documents, and sales and marketing, and sales documents. Since we're using the purchase order um, template, we'll go to purchase documents. We'll go ahead and select the purchase order approval workflow. And you can't actually edit the template. You need to come up here and click new and click new workflow from template. 
So I've selected the purchase order approval workflow. I'm gonna click new workflow from template. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this workflow. It does generate a, a unique code automatically, but I'm gonna call this one Ashley's PO M, short for approval. Just gonna take a second to update the related records. So there's a couple things I wanna point out on this page. You see, we have these three different columns. The when event is the um, event or action that is going to trigger this workflow. The on condition is the criteria that this event must meet in order for this workflow to be triggered. And then the then response is what will happen um, as a result of, of this workflow. So you'll notice that this um, is blue as in many places Business Central, that means you can click into it. Um, if it's blue like this, that means there's multiple responses set up and you're not seeing all of those responses. So if you click in here, you can see all of the other responses. If it's got the black text like this, that means there's the only uh, response that's configured for that event. So we created this workflow from our template. The next step is to adjust the on condition uh, to filter for purchase orders over $10,000. So we're going to set that criteria so this only occurs on purchase orders over $10,000. So I'm going to do greater than sign and then 10,000 in this amount field, okay? And then the next step was that we were going to configure the um, direct approver method. So I'm going to come to uh, this then response. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on create an approval request. So you'll notice that when I click on different lines, that the options below um, open up if there is any. So you have to click on this third line, create an approval request for the record using the approver type. And we're going to um, leave the approver type as approver, but you do see we have the salesperson and purchaser um, option there and the workflow user group. So leave your approver type as approver. And then for the approver limit type, we're going to change this to be the direct approver. And you can see those other methods listed here as well. So approver limit type, direct approver. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and click OK here. And that does um, use the direct approver method. It'll look back at my approval user setup window to, to look for that setting. Um, the last thing we're going to do before we enable is we're going to add a notification for the sender. So you'll see we have these two lines for an approval request is approved. And if you look at the on condition, we want this one um, that doesn't have the greater than sign that just says the two, two dots and then zero, the colon and the zero. Um, so come to this one because this is saying there's no more approvals um, pending in the system. And go ahead and click on the, the response. So once an approval request has been approved, we're going to remove the record restriction. We're going to release the document. And then we're going to add a step so that that notification occurs. So I'm gonna click on this third line. I'm gonna go over here and click the three dots. And this is gonna give me my list of workflow responses that I can add to this. The one that I want is create a notification for 1%. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, click okay. And you'll see that these options opened up here. Now I could specify a specific user to receive this, but I, I want it to be the sender. So all I have to do is come here and toggle this See where this says user, I'm gonna to toggle this and it's gonna change it to sender, okay? The notification entry type, um, I would like approval on this one. That just depends on how you set up notifications in your system. Um, that is all I need to do on this page. So now I've, I've adjusted my on condition, I've set up the direct approver method, I've added that notification. The final step is to go ahead and enable this workflow. All right, now the workflow has been enabled. Um, and it is active in the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a purchase order. All right, so I'm gonna create my purchase order. I'm gonna go ahead and select a vendor today. I think we're gonna buy some, some items from um, Worldwide Importers. It's a great company. I don't know if you heard of them. Frequent customer myself. Um, so I'm going to come down here and remember that this is only triggered on purchase orders over $10,000. Uh, but today I need to buy some, some conference tables. So I really need some more conference tables. And I need about 30 of these conference tables. 
Okay, so you can see my total is above um, the $10,000 threshold. And I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to release this without doing the approval and just to show you what happens. And it's not gonna let me do this um, because it's requiring that approval. So instead, I'll click okay here, and then I'm gonna come up here and click request approval. And I'll send the approval request. It's gonna give me a notification right now saying um, the approval request has been sent. My direct approver is Olivia, um, so she will receive this. And then if I wanted to, um, I can come back to my role center here and I can actually see that I have a pending approval request set. So I click on this. You can see that I have the order that I just now created um, sent to Olivia. Okay, that $15,000 one. So now Olivia, if you wanna go ahead and share your screen and bring up that email, and you can see in my email here that I do have an email that's been was just received and this came from Ashley. And so let's take a look here. So I have a notification overview. So this email is telling me that PO106015 requires my approval. So that is great. So I will go ahead and I will click on the link there to the purchase order. And it's gonna bring me directly into Business Central to that purchase order. Okay, it brought me to this purchase order. I can see the conference tables here. I can check out the amount. And I think this looks like a good purchase. I know that we want to go ahead and purchase these conference tables. So I will go ahead and select approve and I will approve this purchase order. And then as you can see, when I approved it, that automatically released it. And so that purchase order can move forward in its processing. I'll pass it back to you, Ashley. All right, so now you can see that I have received a new notification from Olivia Nelson, and it says that my um, workflow or my, my approval request was approved. I can have a link right to the purchase order, uh, but because it's already released, I don't actually have to go back and, and view it. It's already started to be processed by the next department. Okay, so um, next we will get into the general journal approval configuration. Okay, so the next scenario that we'll walk through is we will pretend that we have a controller of the company who wants to approve any and all manual journal entries before they post. So in order to set this up, we're going to configure an approval request for a general journal batch. So the steps that we'll go through as we do that, we'll create a new workflow from the general journal batch approval template. And then we will, just like we edited the last approval workflow, we will adjust the on condition for this particular scenario to filter by the template type of general so that it applies to general journal. And then we'll also, um, this time, we're going to set it to a approver type of specific approver. So we'll pretend in this scenario that Ashley is the controller and I usually have a different approver, but we definitely want Ashley to be the one to approve this because she wants to approve any and all journal entries. And then we will also add a notification for the sender, just like we did last time, so that um, I get notified when my request is approved so that I can go in and post that journal entry. And then we, of course, want to enable that workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll walk through setting that up. Okay, so we are going to set up our workflow approval for the journal batch. So where we're starting is we're gonna start at the workflow templates and we want to go to this finance section here and we're going to use this general journal batch approval workflow. So I will highlight that so I select it and then I'm gonna go ahead and create a new workflow from this template and we'll just make a few tweaks to it. Okay, so we will rename this. I will, for testing purposes, we'll rename this Olivia's journal entry workflow. Yep, okay. All right, so here at the onset, the, the beginning of the workflow is that an approval of the general journal is requested. And you can see here in the when events, it essentially takes two paths here. So down here, it says, if the general journal batch is not balanced, then a message would show saying the selected general journal batch is not balanced and cannot be sent for approval. So before it even gets sent for approval, it does do that check to make sure that the general journal batch is balanced. So 
here's where we want to add our on condition because we want this to only apply to general journals. So here I'm going to filter it so that the template type is filtered to general. But as you see, you could choose any of these other types of journals as well. We could do this on a bank deposit, on a cash receipts journal, um, on a recurring journal entry. So it's possible to modify which types of journals apply to this workflow flow approval, but we just want this to apply to the general journal. So we've got that applied. And then the next thing that we want to do is change the approver type. So here it says add record restriction, but remember this is in the teal color. And that means that there's more than responses than just this first one that we see here. So we'll click on this. So what we want to modify here is who the approver type is. So it says create an approval request for the record using approver type approver and approval. So this means we're gonna send that request to the approver. And so here we'll have approver type be approver, but rather than having a direct approver, which this direct approver would look at the approval user setup, we want to have a specific approver. So we want that specific approver in this instance to be Ashley, since she's the controller. And just to show you an example here, we can go to the approval user setup from right here to see who is set up as who's approver. And for me right now, Tracy is set up as my approver. But since we're using this specific approver, this is where Ashley will come into play as the approver for this workflow. Okay, and then the next thing that we want to be able to do is create a, a notification so that I get notified when Ashley approves the journal entry that I created. So we'll right here, we're gonna to come to the response that happens when the request is approved and we're gonna add an additional response. So I click on the assist edit there and I'm gonna create a notification. Okay, and we're gonna toggle that we want the sender to be notified. So I'm the sender in this instance, or I will be. And then one other thing to note here is, um, and you'll learn this as you set up some approvals that they will usually link directly to the re record. This one I walked through it before and it didn't automatically bring me directly to that general journal page but I'm gonna make that happen. So I'm gonna keep this open here and I'm just gonna to toggle over to another instance of Business Central that I have going here. So when I enter my journal entry and when I get notified that it's been approved, I want to come back directly to this page so that I can post my journal. And so on the approval notification, we can um, control which page it links to when you receive that email. So I'm just coming here to my general journal page and I'm seeing here, I didn't expect inspect, I did control alt, um, control alt F1 to bring up this pane here. I'm able to see that this page ID is 39. And where that comes into play is here on link target page, I'm gonna indicate that I want to be able to be linked to directly to page 39 from that email when I receive that notification. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and enable this workflow. So then I'm gonna go back to my general journal and just for good measure, we'll go back into there since we just enabled the workflow. And I'm gonna pretend that I'm an accountant making a journal entry. Um, we will, let's see, we'll say it's, let's change this to today's date. And we'll look for rent expense. We'll pretend that we had already prepaid some rent and then now we're recognizing that expense. Maybe we prepaid six months at a time, and now we just want to recognize this month's rent expense. Okay, so we're debiting rent expense and crediting our prepaid expense. And then, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try to post this journal. And if I did my job, set up that work approval correctly, I'm running into an error. I'm not unable to post because the journal batch requires approval. Great, so what I will do is I will then request approval and I'm going to send an approval request for the journal batch. We set up our workflow for the journal batch and not the specific journal line. So I will choose journal batch. And then that gives me a notification that an approval request has been sent. And then Ashley should receive a notification requesting her approval. All right, and now I see that that approval email has come through. Um, this general journal batch requires my approval 
and I can see that the page is linked right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that link. Okay, and now Business Central has opened from the link from my email. I can review this entry, see if I'm happy about it. Um, this makes sense. I do approve this request. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click approve right from the general journal batch and click approve. Okay. And now um, Olivia Nelson should receive an email saying that that request has been approved. All right, so I have received an email from Ashley letting me know that my batch was approved. So I click on the link in the email and it's going to open up Business Central directly to that batch that I sent for approval. And now that's been approved, I can go ahead and I can post this batch. And now it's been successfully posted after it's been approved. Thanks, Olivia, for that demo. Next, we'll look at the um, Flow user group configuration that we mentioned. We don't have time to, to go through the demo on this one, but I'm going to just highlight some changes here. So with the workflow user group, as I mentioned earlier, you can send the request sequentially, um, which is what we see here on the left. Uh, so it goes to one person and then the next. On the right here, you can see they all have the same sequence number. So actually, um, everyone is going to receive this request at the same time. With this configuration below, um, it requires every person in that group to approve it, even if they're all in the same sequence, meaning that the approval will not be processed until every single member of that group has approved it. I'm going to show you um, a way to tweak that so that only one person in that group needs to approve it. So maybe it's a scenario where you're, you're sending it to all the department leads, but you only need one department lead to approve that request. So what we're going to change is on the bottom um, section here, we have these two lines related to an approval request is approved. And this creates a loop so that if there's any pending approvals, right, if there's any pending approvals is greater than zero, it's going to continue um, this approval request to the next person. So we're going to modify these two lines um, by deleting the second line. We don't need it at all. And then we're actually going to change this pending approvals to zero to be always. So what that will look like um, is, is this here, right? We've deleted the second line and this now reads as always. Um, so those are the changes that you need to make to get the workflow user group to only require one person's approval. I'm gonna pass this over to Olivia Nelson to talk about some approval setup best practices. Okay, thank you, Ashley. So yes, if you see some of these workflow approvals and say, this looks great, we want to implement one, two different workflow approvals, whatever it is that you want to implement, I just have some guidelines for you. So just some best practices. So when you're deciding what the workflow approvals should be, you want to be sure to involve the business decision makers. So whether that's a sales manager, a purchasing manager, a controller, whoever it is that needs to make that approval, they should be involved in the discussion of defining those business rules. And then once you have the business rules set up, then it's just a matter of setting up that workflow approval so that it works for you. But to make sure that it works, number three there, you want to make sure that you set it up and test, test, test. And test it in a test company so that you're in that safe environment and not holding up users and processes in real life due to the approval not being set up in quite the right way. And then there is export and import functionality that you can use to move that workflow approval from one company to the other once you're happy with the way it functions and ready to go live with that. And one other tip before enabling in production, be sure to communicate. So communicate to everybody involved in that process. Um, if, for instance, if someone now needs to send a sales order for approval before releasing it, communicate that and let them know the steps and, and um, give them a heads up about some of the errors they might encounter if they try to release without sending for approval first. And then once you enable that workflow, uh, that workflow, be sure to be available to support it. Um, as much as we like to think everything that goes in production goes off without a hitch and everything's perfect, we know that's not always the case. So be available to support and help those workflow approvals along through the system as needed or even tweak the logic of that workflow approval. I'll send it back to you, Ashley, to wrap us up. So thank you everyone so much for coming to our presentation. Thank you DynamicsCon for allowing us to host this session. Um, we are gonna have a Q&A after this, so please drop all of your questions, um, workflow related questions in the chat. We're gonna go right into a live Q&A and we'll answer all of them. Thank you. Thank you.